Hello friends and neighbors, this is Pastor Stephen Wall coming to you again from St. John St. Peter Lutheran Church in Cleveland, Wisconsin. Today I'm in my, my office, my home office or study, and I uh, wanted to come to you again with another devotion uh, as we look into God's Word for comfort, assurance, and for guidance for our lives as Christians living in the shadow of the cross. This, uh, this coming Sunday, the sermon will be on the gospel reading, the parable of the unmerciful servant, where Jesus teaches us to forgive as, as we have been forgiven. But I wanted to then take a little look at our Old Testament reading, our first lesson for this coming Sunday, and use that as a little primer to get you ready for worship on Sunday. And this lesson is, is one of my all-time favorite portions of Scripture. It's Genesis chapter 50. So way at the very end of the book of Genesis, the last chapter. And it's a, it's a dialogue that we get between Joseph and his brothers. So we'll read there. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead. They said, It may be that Joseph will hate us and will pay us back in full for all of the evil that we did to him. They sent the following message to Joseph. Before he died, your father commanded us. You are to tell Joseph, Please forgive the offense of your brothers and their sin." because they did evil to you. Now please forgive the offense of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. His brothers also came and fell down in front of him, and they said, See now, we are your servants. Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid. For am I in the place of God? You meant evil against me, but God meant it for good, to bring this to pass and to keep many people alive as it is this day. Now therefore do not be afraid. I will nourish you and your little ones. He comforted them and spoke to them in a kind way. I love the example that, that Joseph sets for us, the, the powerful example of forgiveness, but maybe even more than that, not just the forgiveness, but recognizing how God takes the bad things of life and works them out for good. That how often... Have we been offended by somebody? How, how often has somebody done something to hurt us, to harm us, to do evil to us, just as Joseph's brothers did? I mean, the story of Joseph is incredible, what his brothers did to him, that they sold him literally into slavery. And he was carried off to a foreign land as a slave. And how many years did he spend in slavery? First serving in the, in the house of Potiphar. And then when, uh, when he was falsely accused by Potiphar's wife and he was thrown into prison. How, how long did he languish in prison all those years? Now Joseph could have been bitter about that. Joseph could have harbored a grudge against his brothers for that. But he didn't. He recognized that God uses the wickedness of the world and turns it around for good. God had a purpose and a plan for Joseph. Yes, even all that hardship that he went through, God had a purpose and a plan for Joseph, and he used that not just for his good, but for the, the good of many people, the saving of many lives through Joseph. We don't always see the good that God has in mind, that he's trying to bring out of all the, the hurt and the pain and the suffering of this life. We don't always see 
uh, exactly how, how God's plan is working out. But what an awesome thought to know that God is in control, that God is good all the time, to trust in him and to then be able to forgive others for their, uh, their wickedness, to be able to fig- forgive others when they have caused hurt or harm to us, not to hold on to a grudge, but to let it go. Uh, a professor once uh, defined, defined forgiveness as letting go of our self-perceived right to get even, to get back at somebody. So often we perceive that right. We see somebody else's uh, something, something wicked that they've done, and, and don't we, you feel that in you, that you just want to see justice done. You want them to get what's coming to them. You want them, that, that idea that we see floating around in our society of karma, right? That if you do bad things, eventually bad things are going to come back to bite you. And, and the world loves that idea. Uh, that, we, that we want to see somebody get what's coming to him. And rather than letting go of any self-perceived right to get even with somebody, maybe, maybe we do have a right to get even with them, but a lot of times it, it's more self-perceived than, than uh, act- being an actual right to get even. But as Christians, we can put that in God's hands and entrust it to him, that God will work things out. That God will take care of things, take care of us, help us to get through difficult, painful times, and help us then to forgive those who have sinned against us. Brothers and sisters in Christ, love one another. Continue to show forgiveness, even as God has forgiven you so tremendously Every single sin against God has been forgiven in Jesus Christ. So let us love one another and forgive one another and follow the example of Joseph who forgave his brothers their sins against him. We'll close with the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Forgive our sins as we forgive. You taught us, Lord, to pray. But you alone can grant us grace to live the words we say. How can your pardon reach and bless the unforgiving heart that broods on wrongs and will not let old bitterness depart? In blazing light your cross reveals the truth we dimly know. What trivial debts are owed to us, how great our debt to you. Lord, cleanse the depths within our souls, and bid resentment cease. Then bow to all in bonds of love, our lives will spread your peace.